Hello and welcome back to Fantasy Grounds RPG Map and Image Creation. Uh, we're on to um, episode four. I'm Josh and I'm going to be taking you through um, the continued tutorials on, on uh, these uh, different ways that you can create some of your um, fantasy style maps. Uh, you can use this uh, pretty much all of the concepts that we uh, go through here. Um, can be applied to any sort of map creation. Uh, I'm specifically working in Photoshop, and uh, but most of these things can be done uh, throughout uh, any sort of image editing software. Uh, we will be eventually transitioning into Fantasy Grounds Unity as that becomes available, and I can show you exactly how to use that program and how to create uh, successful maps within it. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing is going over some of the elevation elements of our ground. Uh, we're going to be working uh, in mountains. I'm going to actually show you uh, two different ways. Uh, we're going to do two episodes on this. Uh, the first one is going to be a much more stylized kind of way to create your mountains. And the second one will be a little bit more of a uh, natural, uh, realistic uh, style of uh, elevation. And so there's two uh, very distinct ways that we go about it. And that's why I've decided to uh, break it up into uh, two videos. What we have done so far is we've created our color palette, uh, we've created a nice uh, silhouette of the landmass, and uh, we went through a couple of different ways that we can create some textures. Um, and so we're going to continue on this process here. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to work out a couple of different shapes for our mountains, and we're going to do that very simplistically, and we're going to build up from there. Uh, as always, I'm just using a mouse and uh, anything that I do here uh, requires very little kind of artistic skills. Our first step in creating the mountain is to create the basic shape from which we will then uh, build upon and uh, as we always do, create a more and more complex kind of uh, situation from it. I'm going to uh, use the elliptical selection tool uh, to grab a section of the ground which I will uh, further manipulate into a mountain shape. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that uh, very easily. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we can select all of this information. And as you can see, we have it all divided up into layers here. And so I'm going to copy all of these layers and collapse them. Uh, the reason why I do that is I want to also maintain the original ones and that this uh, particular layer is going to be used only uh, for grabbing information from. This can change later on, and if I want to add more layers down here, I haven't um, got myself in a, in a kind of sticky situation. I, I can always go back and change things later. Uh, grabbing the elliptical tool, if I hold down shift, I can do a complete circle. Uh, if I don't hold down shift, I can do lots of different uh, ellipses. But I want um, a very kind of standard circle. And I'm going to grab it over in here. Uh, there's a bit of um, value information in here. And so we can um, make sure I'm on the right layer. Uh, we can uh, grab all of that. And that's going to help us uh, sell that this is actually part of the landscape. And I'm going to do this much larger than it needs to be so that I can shrink it down. And hitting Control c and then uh, Control j will uh, put it right in to our uh, image here. Now let's turn off all of these other lands and uh, switch over to our move tool. And you can see that this is uh, the basic shape. Now we're going to carve this away to get to our actual mountain shape. Uh, and we're going to do that really, really easily. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn on our grids. Uh, the easy way to do that is uh, control apostrophe. Now if your grid is set to different parameters than this, um, you only need to go to Edit and Preferences, and here you'll see your your guides, grids, and slices. Um, I have mine set to every 300 pixels with one subdivision, and this gives me plenty of room on this size of map. And what I want to do is I'm going to line this up in here. The reason why I'm going to do that is so that I can do a pretty even kind of slice because this will adhere to the corners of my grid uh, kind of st sticks to each little intersection. And when I hit delete, I know that this is quite even. And even though mountains aren't even, obviously, this is a great starting point for me to 
later manipulate the image and to change it to whatever kind of shapes that I wish. And so now I can turn off the grid, recenter the map here a little bit, and uh, I'm going to um, divide this to its light and shadow sides. Mountains are not uh, completely divided right down the middle, so we want a little bit of variant in here, and this polygon selection tool will do quite well for that. Uh, we can come straight down the middle at the top, but then we want to deviate some back and forth. Um, nothing uh, out of... We don't want anything too um, absurd. So you want to keep it a little bit conservative, but you can have uh, some nice little uh, variations to one side or the other. And this is basically uh, the uh, ridge line uh, of the uh, mountain itself. With that selection, if we hit Control-J now, uh, what we have actually done is made another layer, but only with those selected pixels. And so it's right where we want it to be. And we can very easily just hit Control-U, uh, maybe do negative 20. And we've created a shadow side of our mountain. And we're also going to do a little bit of a highlight side as well. And so now we can go back to our original mountain here. And we we don't want to um, we, don't, we don't want to go too overboard with, with our highlights, but we do want to make it have sense and give us a little bit more um, along these edges. And so what I'm going to do is just uh, come up and use a little bit of this uh, tip area just the peak and we're going to give it a little bit of birth here and I'm going to show you why in a second here. We can do still some variations. We want some nice uh, exaggerated areas here. And I've kind of cut that off, but that's fine. So I'm going to hit shift and I'm going to add that to the uh, selection. So with the selection made, I go up to my uh, select drop down menu here and we're going to modify it and we're going to go to feather and we're just going to feather it five pixels. What this does is it changes uh, the perimeter here of our selection to a gradient. And that is great for us in this uh, particular scenario. So now when we hit control J and we turn this away, you can see that this is all faded off on the edges here. I can now uh, hit my control U and I can uh, lighten it a little bit, uh, maybe 10. And so you, as you can see, all of this combined is beginning to make um, a very nice kind of layer here. We're going to want to do uh, some angular uh, areas of highlight as well, and which is great because we can always go back and uh, do some more selections and make this a much more kind of complex shape. Uh, oftentimes where you have these angular changes is where you're going to get the ridges that come down. And so this is um, when we want to actually look at the shapes that we're creating here and begin to identify them. So here we can have this come up. This one as well. down here and I think that this will be our last one here again control J and we can increase this a little bit I'm not gonna go as high as the other highlight um, maybe an 8 Now that we have these all selected uh, or 
separated rather in our own individual layers, uh, this becomes much more easy for us to manage, change, and manipulate as we move along. I'm going to switch back over and I'm just going to show uh, the landmass here. Uh, you can see that, uh, let me grab all of these layers, we'll move it uh, out of the way here a little bit. Uh, you can see that it is only able to be seen by the highlighted areas and the shadowed areas. I'm going to shrink this down and eventually we're going to shrink this down quite a lot, but uh, I want to work on it at a larger scale so that it's easier for me to manipulate. I'm going to increase um, the lightness just a little bit of the original layer here to help give us a little bit of a differential here. If so needed, we can now uh, change each of these highlighted areas. And so if I want to uh, make this more dramatic, I can easily adjust that. What I want to do is I want to create uh, the highest amount of contrast at this divide. Uh, it gives us the most realistic kind of representation, uh, natural, and it also um, helps, helps sell the scale of the mountain. And so I can make a new layer. I can mask the previous layer so that I can only work inside those pixels and if I grab a soft round brush here, I can change my layer to a multiply layer. I'm going to increase the size of my brush here a bit. And I'm just going to go along this edge here. Now, as you can see, uh, that's a lot of contrast and we don't want to go that severe quite yet, so we can uh, reduce down the opacity here a bit. We might even go a little bit more. At this stage, you can see that it's really starting to take shape of the mountain itself. And if we uh, now uh, move it down to an appropriate size, it begins to blend in quite well. I'm going to copy the entire mountain, collapse it down, and then I'm just going to uh, turn off all of these layers here. How I'm going to blend this in a little bit further here is I'm just going to use my soft round eraser and blend in this base. Copying the same mountain over again. I can now go into my uh, warp parameters and begin to uh, change a lot of the elements that we have here. And by overlapping these, We can use our initial uh, mountain to begin to build much more complex mountain shapes.
And you want some of these to uh, blend into each other. You want to get a lot of this uh, random interactions. Sometimes the unexpected creations that you do uh, turn out to be the best. I would repeat this process uh, two or three times to make some different variations in mountains. And then I would make groupings that I can change and move throughout my uh, creation here. You really want to try to uh, give it a very layered feeling. Make it feel like that many of the mountains and different parts flow from each other. creating kind of these extended ridges. And don't be afraid to experiment. And layer them. Uh, if you want, uh, if you're you're feeling like your ridges are looking a little bit too um, contrived, if there's too much of a pattern in one particular area, uh, you can always grab this one particular mountain. I would always make a new layer and use a uh, clipping mask here, but you can uh, go to your brush and feel free to grab colors and paint in these areas. to add more and more variants. If you want to make adjustments to the entire thing, you can grab the whole thing. As you can see here, our shadowed side is getting a little bit uh, less and our we have a lot going on on the highlighted side. So we can grab these and give it a little bit more balance.
just pull out some of that shadow side a little bit further, just to give it a little bit of balance. Now we can adjust these uh, values later on, depending on how our map is coming along. Uh, but that is a very basic uh, way that you can create some simplistic mountains um, for your RPG maps. Thank you for watching, and uh, we will see you on the next tutorial.